All right, gentlemen and ladies and whatever, I'm going to be showing you how to rebuild a Evo 8 throttle body. These have very common boost leak problems, uh, which just over time, the seals, the throttle body shaft seals tend to go out. So that's going to be this guy and this guy, and they create massive boost leaks, which is... Lot, pretty much horsepower loss so I'll be showing you how to rebuild one of these and how to fix that annoying boost leak to make more power so um, Evo is getting tuned this week and I'm just going you know marking the systems checking each system make sure everything's uh, a-okay so we won't have any problems on the dyno so this is one of the problems I need to attend to and I'm finally getting to it. So, first things first, before you won't disassemble anything, you want to have um, Sharpies. Something that, you know, you can see what you've done. And these are for, one, the throttle body, I mean, the, the TPS right here. You want to make sure you mark this so where it's at. So when you put this back, you know where it's going to be at. Because once this is removed you could run the risk of um, improper improperly calibrating it when you put it back in the wrong position so I marked that about four places that should be good enough I should have an idea just one more and then that one's for that so I can see and then you also want to mark the tension on the recoil spring right here for the actual throttle plate. So where would be, right here would be good. All right, so that's marked. Now I know where to put that back. And after that, you're go ahead, you're, you have the green light to go ahead and disassemble this. So I'll be right back with that. And uh, for the TPS, this is actually a seven millimeter bolt. I want to remove this one. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Do you not fit? I think my socket's a little too fat for that second bolt, but. We'll see. That's that. Come on. Barely got it. Cool. All right, and then now you're gonna need some needle nose uh, C-clip pliers to remove that C-clip in there. This is, will allow you actually pull out the shaft. So um, you can go pretty much anywhere, like Harbor Freight, wherever, to get this. I got it from Harbor Freight. It will do the job. Let's uh, go get that now. Well, so this C-clip, the actual holes to get it out, were smaller than I anticipated. So I had to get creative with my C-clip pliers and actually grind down the bits a little bit to make it fit. So hopefully I did enough grinding and we can get this clip out. Nope, need some more. I'll be back. All right, so a little bit more grinding. I finally got them thin enough to hopefully ply this thing out.
Come on. All right. Plan two. I need something to pull it out while I have it loose. There we go, got it out. Or so I thought. And here it is. Now these should come out. These little vacuum plates or washers. You have a plastic one and you have a metal one as well. Cool. Okay, once that's out, you can we can almost see that one of the actual seals right there you're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the actual uh, butterfly valve so that requires a flathead and these are uh, locked tight remember to lock tight these there's been incidents where people rebuild these things they screw them back in and they do not lock tight them and the screws get loose get sucked into the intake and they cause a lot of damage once they're inside. So remember to lock tight these. And now that should just come out. There you go. And then now it actually just slides out. There you go. And there you have it. Here's our boost leaks. One right there. And one right there. Uh, since you have everything loose and out, might as well, it would be a good idea just go ahead and clean everything out. So I'm going to go clean this up and I'll get back to you guys. Alright, so now we want to go ahead and remove these thorough body shaft seals you can use a flat head I found these in my tool drawer so I'm gonna try these out first and I'm already seeing that a flathead is gonna be better so they have a metal ring on the outside so try to get into that while not chewing up The actual uh, seal. You can see that these are pretty torn up and used. Ow. A little bit more careful. If I can push these out somehow. Jeez. 
Jeez Louise. Well, here's the whole seal coming undone, pretty much. Showing you how bad these were. There you go. So, best way, I guess, to do this is carve some of that seal out. And then just get some needle nose pliers and ply them out. You can see that this one was pretty trashed. Okay. Now for the other one. So, uh, after much fighting around and not being able to get out with a flathead, and I, you know, I don't want to do any damage to it, I thought, well, let's try a socket. And I found out that the same mil seven millimeter socket that I was using to remove the TPS can fit right into these seals and we'll pry it out. So, fun little quick tip. You can see how much these things have gone through. Well, those are the old ones. And here are the new ones. You wanna make sure you lube these up with some sort of grease. Uh, any all-purpose grease would do, so. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up, grease these new shaft seals on, and then we should be golden after that. Alright, so cleaned it up again. Now we're going to get ready to install these actual seals. Um, there's an inside, or like, there's a, I guess, an indention on these seals. You want to make sure the seal that, where it's going inside, goes into the throttle body as so not the other way around so indention inside this is going to be facing us so i'm going to go ahead and uh lube up these areas where it's going to be at i'm going to go ahead and lube up the actual seal as well install it almost if you can't get it in with your fingers you can go ahead and use the washer that actually came out from this side to press it in just like that. All right, so that's one side. Let's go ahead and get the other side. And there that, that one is. Now we're just going to go ahead and reassemble it. Um, you also want to make sure you actually lube up the shaft. <laughs> lube up your shaft. Because that's going to meet with the seal as well. Okay, 
and since we're gonna be putting the spring back as well let's get that it's set in place That went in too fast. All right, now we're gonna set tension. So we'll reinsert the springs in here and then turn it around to where all your markings line up. And after some much fiddling around, you can see I got the tension back in the spring. Everything is lined up as it should. Um, it just took some playing around really. So just try to do your best with what you got. But that's that. Now. We're going to go ahead and go for the fun part. I'm actually going to put the seals back on the TPS side. This heat clip is going to be a pain to get back in, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, that's that. Now for the seat clip. Whoa, almost lost that one. Okay, there's that. Oh, that went easy. Okay, there you go. C-clip is in. And now we just got to go ahead and realign our TPS with the marks that we have. And we should be good after that. All right, so there you go. Bolt that up. And then after that, you're actually gonna go ahead and lock tight these bolts where the actual butterfly is valve. There you go, get that settled in, lock tight these bolts, and then screw it in there. And do the same for the other one, and you have a rebuilt throttle body. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on this, and but that's just the gist of it. Alright guys, have a good one.